Welcome to Grey Primer. My name is Nick. I'm your host, and on this week's episode, I'm taking a break from looking at miniatures, and instead I'm going to look at a board game that features rocks, rope, and wood. Shobu. Maybe that's not entirely accurate. It does come with miniatures of sorts. It comes with these little stones. For sure, they don't need building or priming or painting. They come out of the box ready to rock. And um, they still represent, you know, playing pieces, characters on a, on a board. And it's, a, it's kind of a war game, you know, really. It's an abstract strategy game, but you can see that it's one versus one here, trying to eliminate your opponent's uh, pieces off of one of these... Uh, one of these boards. But what sort of surprises me is that it looks 3,000 years old, and yet it's a 2019 release. It just looks so classic. I love the design. Of, you know, from the box art here, it just looks, or the box images, it looks really beautiful, really well thought out. And the other surprise for me was how hard this was to find. This wasn't available in any of the shops I went to uh, back in January. I think I checked in six different places. I had been across to Montreal, and I checked all around Montreal. I came back to Ireland, checked all around here, checked some of the independent retailers online here and in the UK. Couldn't find it. And eventually had to get it from a, a larger online retailer. And I generally prefer to shop local or shop at an independent online retailer. But in the case of Shobu, I just wasn't able to find it anywhere. But at the, the, with the big guys, I'm glad I've got it. But I wish this was in more places. This should be front and center. This is so easy to learn. It's aesthetically incredibly pleasing. And it should be in, like even in bookshops or those sort of high street places where you'd be able to get Catan or Monopoly or Risk. This should be there with them. And they be, should, should be selling by the truckload. So maybe that's something that will improve over time. Maybe it'll start to appear in retailers once we go into the sort of post-COVID phase and shops start to reopen. It'd be cool to see this in all those shops. But anyway, let's get into it. Let's have a look at these components and let's have a quick sort of run through of how the game actually plays. Back in a sec. Okay, so here it is. It's Shobu. Uh, beautifully challenging. It's a incredibly pretty abstract strategy game from Smirk and Laughter Games. And this was designed by Manolis Varanis and Jamie Sidak. We got two players, age 8 plus, taking about 20 minutes. Really beautiful sort of design touches to this box as well. It is just incredibly pretty. I'll give you a really straightforward run through of the, the rules here. Move one of your stones up to two spaces in any direction. Match that move with another of your stones in the opposite color board. And push an opponent's stone off the board's edge. Remove all four of your opponent's stones from any one board to win. And that's it. Amazing. But let's look at the components because they are phenomenal. Yeah, and here we get a summary of the rules. And then just a bit more detail. But that's it. That's the entire rule book, which is just lovely. And look at these. Beautiful wooden playing boards. You've got Shobu carved into them here. Sections of 16. You get the pale wood, and you get the darker wood, and you get two of each. It's like that. So that's your game board. Got a length of, it's lovely actually, soft rope to separate your home boards from your opponent's home, home boards. And then we have these river stones. Oh, these are lovely. Oh, wow. They're powdery looking bags, but the actual stones themselves are beautifully polished. And look at how pretty these are. And obviously they're they're all unique and I think that's just incredible. There's just something lovely about having them in your hands actually as well. So that's the white stones and then the black stones here. 
And again, uh, like, there's just something so pleasing about holding them. They're beautifully polished. There's a lovely weight to them. I mean, these are, you can hear these are real stones. These are not just composite things or something. And, um, yeah, really lovely. So let's set up a game. So now we're ready to play. And it's pretty straightforward stuff. These are my home boards. This is my home color. And on either of my home boards, I can take a single passive action. And by passive, it means that I'm not hitting an opponent's stone off the board. I can move one or two squares in any direction with one of my pieces, as long as it doesn't take my stone off the board. And also on my passive action, as long as it doesn't cause me to impact another stone. So for example, I could move one square across here. Or two. Over here as well, same. Any direction I want to go. Backwards, forwards, diagonals, no problem. So that's part one of my turn. Let's take this guy, move him one space diagonally. My passive action is done. Now what I have to do is the second part, which is my aggressive action. And I have to replicate this move on one of the other color boards. So I've got one diagonal that way. So I could do it here. That would be fine. Here, no problem. Up here, no problem at all. I can do that all day long. As long as I match this action on the opposite colored board. Now say for example, I had a stone positioned here from a previous move. Now on my passive action, obviously I can't move this, because that's an aggressive act. And I probably don't want to move one of the stones in one of my darker colored board on my darker colored board here. Because that means I have to replicate the action on the lighter colored board. But let's look at two alternatives. So here I've got a stone that's in a prime aggressive position. And in order for it to get that to knock out one of the white stones, all I've really got to do is on my light colored board, move one forward. And then I replicate it over here by moving one forward and I've knocked the white stone off. Another potential action I could take is to move this stone diagonally too. And here, on my aggressive action on the opposite colored board, diagonally too. And I knock out this white stone. But always be thinking of where you're going to leave your piece. By leaving this one here, I'm exposed to being knocked out on this side. So always be thinking those couple of turns ahead if you can. Get used to the thinking about the, the consequences of that action. And be thinking about the win is when a single board of any of the four is devoid of your opponent's colors. That's a win. It doesn't matter how weakly represented you are in any of these other boards. It doesn't matter how few pieces you have left. If you manage to dominate one board, you got to win. Really simple. Really easy to set up. Incredibly fast. Lovely, aesthetic. You will probably drive your opponent mad sitting rattling these in your hand, especially when they're the, the, the fallen bodies of their troops. But it's strategic, pretty, easy to learn, and it is highly recommended. But that wraps it up for Shobu from Smirk and Laughter Games. I've been dying to do this video for ages because I absolutely love this game. If you enjoyed the content, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, you'll see links to our friends over at Mighty Lancer Games who have just reopened their store, so best of luck to them. On the next episode of Grey Primer, I will be returning to familiar territory and I will be looking at a couple of unboxings of some very creepy miniatures from Studio McVeigh in two of the others expansion packs. Going to be looking at Greed and Envy. And that's coming up in the next episode. Until then, take care and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.